Welcome to Ignition by Inductive Automation. Now let's take a look at our online demo project located at demo.inductiveautomation.com. And you can simply navigate there using any browser. This demo project showcases all the features of Ignition and you can visit and tour through all those features over here. It is also built to be mobile responsive in that a single project will look good on a desktop, a tablet, and a mobile device. As you can see here, I'm on a desktop and I get all the main content oriented for a desktop. I get a lot of detail in the project, like in the header, I can see the alarms that are active, who is logged in, and I can navigate around. On a mobile device, I don't have a lot of screen real estate. So instead, we're gonna hide some of that information. So in the header, you can see some of that's gone. The menu is not showing by default, but we can bring it out when we wanna bring it out. And the content here is in a single column. Every part of this project was built that way. And in fact, we need to approach looking at our projects for how people are gonna be looking at it and how they're gonna interact with it on different mediums. Now let's tour through some of the features here. Let's start with real-time status control. Let's look at a couple of HMI's, HMI examples. Here we've got a high performance HMI example where I can see that process, get a lot of detail, click on something to turn it on or off or to uh, just see more information about that particular area. Here's a, a more traditional example of the HMI as well as we have a dashboard here at the bottom. Now this is a perfect example where if I'm on a phone, I don't have a lot of screen real estate. I don't wanna scrunch that entire process. So we wanna see that data, all the relevant information, but I wanna be optimized for a mobile device. So let's go and look at what it would look like on that, on a phone. So here I can see the same content. It's still in a single column. I can still do control, turn things on or off, but it gets optimized for that. So let's go and look at some other features here of the demo project. Let's look at history. We can take any tags, we can log them to a SQL database over time. So we can see charts and, and, and calculations of that information. So here I'm looking at the last two hours broken up into one minute intervals. Uh, we can also apply calculations and change that start date end date. I can see my information, I can zoom into it. I can see the X trace of the values are at given times. So we can zoom back out, we can get all that information. And the same experience would be there on a mobile device. I can also look at this data in tabular form. So on a desktop, I wanna see that raw data or calculations, and I wanna be able to sort through the columns. I wanna be able to have pagination to go between all the different records that are coming back. Uh, on a mobile device though, I don't wanna have that data being scrunched again. So instead of seeing it in a table form, we can look at that in a card layout form. It all oriented in a single column there. We can also take the, those tags and we can configure alarms on them. So we can see the current status of the alarms. We can uh, look, log alarms to, to the database historically. It was always, we can notify people through email, SMS, and voice. They're all two way, we can acknowledge from those sources. So right now I've got three alarms that are active. Everything's been acknowledged. Let's go ahead and turn this alarm off and let's put it back on there. So now we have a, an active alarm that is, is not acknowledged. And you can see down here I can acknowledge it. And at the top I get the one alarm in the header. So I'm gonna go ahead and acknowledge that alarm. Now we've taken care of it. Again, the header you can see is now zero alarms. All that's being logged in the database historically, so go to our journal so we can see various KPIs and see that alarm history. And so here I can look at uh, alarm summary, alarms by hour, by frequency, by duration. We can see the history of all those events. And again, if I was on a mobile device, I wanna see all that in a single column and I wanna get that table to be, a, to be card layout. So all that same relevant information um, but again, optimized for that device. The demo project here really showcases all the features uh, that Ignition has to offer. So I'd encourage you to go and play around with it, look at the reporting, see PDF reports on screen, we can export those. More importantly, we can have reports being automatically saved, printed, emailed behind the scenes. We can uh, create forms and do database management for inventory control or creating access or Excel sheets into Ignition. We can connect to web services, REST or SOAP APIs. We can bring that data into Ignition. And there's also a few different uh, vertical applications for different industries you could take a look at. So you can see the entire application built from scratch there um, in that vertical. So what we wanna do now is show you how this was all built using Ignition. So we're going to download, install, and configure Ignition and uh, from scratch so you can see the whole process. And it's really easy to get started with Ignition. It only takes minutes to install and it takes minutes to get connected and configured as well. So let's go here to inductiveautomation.com. I click on the download Ignition button or we can download Ignition. And you can choose the installer that's right for you. Ignition is totally cross-platform, so it runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. You can install it on a laptop, desktop, server, or virtual machine. You can even run Ignition Edge on an embedded device such as a Raspberry Pi. Ignition can go practically anywhere you need to get the data you want. So I've already downloaded the Windows 64-bit installer for Ignition since I'm on a Windows 64-bit machine. I'm gonna go ahead and run through the installer so we can get it installed on my machine. It is very quick and easy to get Ignition installed. 
So we're just going to run through the, the base install, select all the defaults of it, just click next through all of those. And we're doing it here on my machine. I have a desktop. So Ignition is server software. So you'll need to install it in a single place. Ignition is also licensed by the server. That means you purchase a one-time flat fee price for the server and you get unlimited tags, screens, clients, designers, projects, devices, database connections, and much more. Ignition comes with a two-hour trial period, so you can evaluate the software before you purchase it. The software is fully featured, but runs for two hours at a time. Once the two hours is up, Ignition will stop, but you can simply press a reset button and try again for another two hours. You can test out every single feature of Ignition. All right, that's it. Ignition is now installed, and it's going to start up. When it starts up, we're going to go through a commissioning phase to set up our accounts and to get everything up and running. So let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm going to select uh, next. I'm going to accept the agreement here. I will choose a root username password for Ignition. I'll choose admin and then a password. And remember that password because you're going to use, need that to get into the configuration area and to the designer. I'm going to go next. I'm going to set the, the ports for Ignition uh, for HTTP and HTTPS. So Ignition is a web server. We can access Ignition anywhere in our network or even remotely through a VPN connection by typing in the IP address or the host name of that server followed by that port. And you can change that here if you'd like. I'm going to just choose the defaults, go next, and now we're going to start the Ignition gateway up. So as you can see in our browser, I'm on my local machine, so localhost colon 8088. Um, and once this part is completed, it will bring me to the Ignition Gateway web page, where we then can go into the configuration, connect up to a PLC, connect up to a SQL database, and, and do a lot of the other configuration in there. Ultimately, we can then launch the designer. We can download and run the designer. That will allow us to do all the configuration of our project, from creating tags to creating screens, uh, to creating reports, alarm notification pipelines, and much more. So after you have that Ignition installed on the server, that central server, you can launch a designer anywhere, and you can have multiple people working on the same project at the same time in that design environment. It is a free designer that just comes with the software, uh, and it's a single environment to do everything you need. Once that project is developed, then anybody can go and open their browser and they can point it to that server so they can access the runtime or the, the client of that. And it's very, very simple to get this out to lots of people. With the licensing model being unlimited, there's no barriers to, to all the PLCs you want to connect up to, the, the databases you want to log information to or read from, and all the people you want to get access to the application. So it really allows you to scale and add more. Um, if you start small, you can continue to add on to the, the system without having to come back for, for any more uh, licensing. All right, Ignition's now installed and running. That's how easy it is to get started. So now let's go ahead and get, up, get it connected. So you'll see a couple of quick start items here, but I'm going to go to the Gateway homepage. Again, this is what we would, we would type in with the, the IP address and host name to get to this uh, page, where we can then, if we were a client, we are an operator, we can launch the runtime piece of it. If we are a developer, we can go in the configuration area and we can work with the designer. So I'm gonna go in the configuration area. Let's log in, admin is my user, and then of course that password I put in the commissioning phase. First thing we'll do is connect up to a PLC, and we do that through OPC. We have a built-in OPC UA server in Ignition with native drivers that are completely cross-platform for a lot of different types of PLCs. Now we don't have every PLC out there. Of course, we can also connect to third-party OPC servers. For our devices, if I go down here to device connections, I can connect up to one or more PLCs. We have a lot of drivers built in, as I mentioned, Allen Bradley Ethernet Suite, a DMP3, Modbus, Armron NJ, Siemens S7. There's a, a TCP and UDP driver for barcode scanners and scales and some simulators. If you don't have a PLC, you can use these, give you a lot of tags you can get going with. So let's connect up to two different PLCs. Let's do a Micrologix, go next. I'm going to call this one MLX and put the IP address 102777. Come down here and create the device. As you see here, it'll go from disconnected to connected. So now we're ready to go. We can start reading information from that PLC. Let's connect up to the simulator as well. I, I recommend the generic simulator. It has a bunch of tags we can work with. So I'm going to call that SIM and create that device. Now I've got two PLCs where I can do real-time status control and real-time alarming. If I want to log historical data, we need to connect up to a SQL database. So we've chosen to put all, for our story, to put all the data into a standard SQL database. It keeps the data open, allows you to be flexible and agile with that information, and allow third-party access to it as well. We don't ship Ignition with the database. Uh, so if, what we do is install a database of our choosing and then connect Ignition to it. And for that, we go to Databases Connections, and we can create a new connection to MariaDB, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, Postgres. Uh, whatever database you'd like there. We can connect to one or more databases. 
I happen to have a Microsoft SQL Server Express edition on my machine. I'm going to go ahead and connect to that, Microsoft SQL Server. I'm going to call it DB. It's on my local machine. The instance name is SQL Express. I'm going to put my username uh, and, and password in here. The database that I want to connect up to is Ignition. And come down here at the bottom and I'll create that connection. So I did create a, a database in there called Ignition. It was a blank database. Ignition will create all the tables, we'll insert it, and we'll, of course, insert the data and we'll query it. So now I've got the database, it's valid. We've got the two the foundational pieces in place. Now we can start building out a project. So for that, we're gonna launch a designer and we're gonna we're gonna show how we can you know, build our tags and actually create these screens. So for that, we're gonna click on the get designer. Uh, and download the designer. Here I'm on Windows, so I'll download the Windows one. I'll just save it and then run that installation. And it'll create a shortcut for us so we can get back to it very easily next time. It's a very simple install. We don't have to worry about licensing it or taking projects and backups and bringing it here. The designer connects back up to that server. So that server model, the, everything, the client's designer, they connect up to that server. So here you can see I've got my launcher up and running. We can add Ignition gateways um, into this. So I only have one, my local machine. So I'll go ahead and add uh, designer. And so let's here my local machine. I'll select that one. And now I can launch that designer. So really quick and easy to get the designer up and running. We'll download everything we need. And uh, again, we'll pull those projects. And we save, we save back to that server. And that automatically will update all the people that are looking at the data. So let's log into the designer. And I don't have any projects yet, so I'm gonna create a new project. I'm gonna call it Demo. And we'll start with one of our project templates that have a lot of navigation built in for us and some screens we can start from rather than starting from scratch. So I'll choose this menu navigation one. I'll go ahead and bring up the designer. As I mentioned, it's a single development environment to do everything that we have with Ignition, and it supports concurrent development as well. So we can have multiple people working on the same project at the same time. A lot of collaboration that can go into that. So we're gonna show creating some screens. So that is under the perspective area. And you'll see there's a bunch of pages already configured here. So as an example, if I click on this home, open this home up, you'll see there's the home screen. If I look at my docs, there's a menu screen that we have left-hand side. So there's already a lot of things built out. Since we have this project, the skeleton project is ready to go, we can launch this as a client. So I'm gonna go to tools. I'm gonna launch perspective, launch a session. So it's gonna bring me to my browser. As you can see, I just put in that URL to get to this application. And now I can see the screen. And I can navigate between the different areas. There's charts, alarm settings, and back to the home. What I want to do now is actually build out a real uh, screen, bring in some tags, uh, do some real-time status control and history. So let's go back to the designer, back to the home screen. And in order to do any configuration, we've got to have tags. So over here is our tag browser. I can go and browse our OPC server. There's the MicroLogix with all of its tags that we can bring in. I can select individual tags I'm interested in or entire folders. So I'll select the N7F8 folders, drag them in. We'll go to the simulator and drag all of those folders in as well. Now I've got a bunch of tags configured. We can certainly go in here and we can rename tags. If I want to call uh, you know, this, this tag something different, we can edit that. We can uh, change names. We can uh, add folders in here. We can add history, alarming, scripting, all these different things that we want. So, but now I've got some tags I can work with. As you'll notice, the designer is a live designer. We can see the values before we go into the runtime. It really helps us build out our screens, understand what it's going to look like. So I take, have these tags. Let's take this N70 tag. Let's start building out a screen. So I'm going to drag it on the screen, create a cylindrical tank, drag it over here as LED display, another tag on LED display. Take the same uh, tag and do a, a gauge there. And we can, of course, do control as well. So I can take a writable uh, Boolean 1. We can drag it over here as a toggle switch. We can take a uh, writable integer 2 over here as a slider. Uh, we can really build that out. Now, these components that we have, there's a lot of different components that we can work with. You'll see them over here in the component set. And they all have properties for the way it looks and the way it behaves. Um, and what we've done by drag and drop is link those properties to the tags. So this, this toggle switch you'll see is selected is linked uh, to that tag. We can make it bidirectional if we want to write back to the PLC as well. Very easy to work with. There's a lot of components over here that we can bring on the screen. So let's go to our input and bring in a multi-state button, which by default is HOA, but you can change those states over here. Uh, so there's zero, one, two. You can just specify what you want those states to be. And now we can link the control indicator value properties to our tags. So let's take this writable integer one, drag it over to the control value, 
um, and uh, take this one and drag it to the indicator value, make the control value bidirectional. Now you've got that built out. Very quick and easy to, to build out these real-time status control screens. We can also, of course, do graphics. We have a whole symbol factory library built in. There's over 4,000 graphics there. Uh, I can drag these onto screens. We also can import any SVG, uh, image, uh, you know, PNG, uh, JPEG, or GIF we could bring onto a screen as well. Uh, very easy. Now, SVGs are comprised of a lot of different elements. We can stylize them individually, or we can apply a tint on top. So let's do a let's flatten this object. So we have a we can have one object on top that we can do a tint, and it has a fill property, a paint. I'm going to bind that paint to a tag. We're going to select that writable integer one tag, and I want to go from a number to a color. So I'm going to add a transform, where I'm going to do a mapping transform from a number to a color. So let's add three states there: zero, one, two. If it is zero, we'll make it red. If it is one, we'll make it green. And if it is two, we'll make it yellow. And that's it. I press OK. You can see that that tint is ready to go. Now, the magic of Ignition is how fast we can make these changes in the, in the designer and then deploy that to people looking at it. Um, so now I've made some changes. I have the client open. I'm going to go here and go save. As soon as I save that to the server, the server is going to push that change out to all the clients. I can have hundreds of people looking at it, and you'll see the, that update. As you can see, now it's ready to go, and I can go in here, and I can interact with this data. Uh, turn things on or off, you can see uh, all of that changing. So very, very quick and easy to build out these, these kinds of screens. Now let's show history. So let's go over here to our chart screen, and we're going to do... We're going to take these tags, log them to the historian, and then we're going to put a chart in the window so we can view that information. So first and foremost, we'll go to our tags. I'll select these realistic tags, right-click, edit. We're going to go down here and turn on history and select that database that we connected up to earlier, so that DB. Go ahead and press OK. There's other settings we can go in there to tune the historian and all of that. This little icon here lets us know that those tags are being logged. Now we can bring on to this screen the XY chart. So I'm going to just put chart uh, and find that component drag it over here we're going to make that to grow be the full size of the screen and what i want to do is bind the data set the, the data source to tag history and i've only been logging for you know just for a little bit here so i'm going to just select the last one minute of data and i'm going to select the tags i want so let's go down here to our realistic zero and let's go to our realistic one i want to give them better names um you could have called those does tag something better um, but instead i'm going to give them a, an alias here for a process temp and output temp. And then I want to see what that data looks like, so I'm going to bring it back as a document. I'm going to press OK. So now I can look at, I can see the data is in there, and I can see all the information uh, in uh, all the all the data that's coming back. And uh, lastly, what I'm going to do is add a cursor so I can see the x-trace, just like we saw in the, uh, the demo project earlier. And now ready to go, we can save this. So again, I'm going to move this over here, go to our charts. It's blank. I'm going to go File, Save All. And that chart will now be here in the runtime. Um, so now we're ready to go. I can see the X trace, zoom into particular areas, zoom back out, and we can also put calendar controls. We want to change, allow the user to change start date, end date from the runtime. But easy to get that information logging and easy to get it working with. The last thing we want to show is doing alarm. So I'm going to go to this writable boolean one, right click, edit, and I'm going to turn on alarm, create an alarm. I have one or more alarms on there. I'll call this a fault. And I'll do the display as machine a fault. I'll make this maybe a critical alarm. And I can put some notes. Here are some notes. And we'll make it active when equals to 1. There's a lot of conditions you can put in here for when that alarm is going to be active. And there's uh, dead bands and delays. So of course, we can also notify people through email, SMS, and voice when these alarms occur and have all this, these events being logged in the database, as we saw earlier. But let's just configure this. Press OK. Now I've got that alarm configured. So if I go back to my runtime, Go back to the home screen. Uh, if I toggle this switch, this is linked to that same tag that has the alarm. If I make that go to a one, we now have an active alarm. In the system, if you look in the top right, there's one alarm active. I can click on that. I can see the, that alarm. I can, of course, acknowledge that alarm here as well. So really, really easy to get alarms configured. And uh, we can really take advantage of Ignition and do a lot more with it. There's a lot of features there we can work with in the designer. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of how to get started with Ignition. It is easy and quick to get Ignition installed and connected. Please, please feel free to download Ignition and try it out for yourself. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact Inductive Automation. Thank you so much for watching.